Welcome to Crowdfunding Hell. This was iBackpack, as presented on Indiegogo in 2015 to the crowdfunding world. Since backpacks have become go-to items for so many people, this understandably caught attention and raised quite a bit of money on Indiegogo, some $720,910 from over 4,000 backers. Once established in the crowdfunding psyche, the campaigners went over to Kickstarter and raised an additional $76,694 from 252 more backers. It was the last any of them would see of their money or an iBackpack. Originally supposed to ship in March 2016, then December of that same year, the delay was alleged to have been caused by the need to source different rechargeable batteries to replace the originals. This took advantage of some widespread news of the time concerning other products with the combustion safety problem documented. No one has been able to verify the accuracy of the claim. It would seem not to be the only problem that the iBackpack faced looking at the updates posted by the campaign creator Doug Monahan, which ceased completely, by the way, in March of 2017 on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Problem after problem kept delaying a product that appeared about to begin manufacture back in 2015, and all apparently beyond Doug Monahan's control. This should not have surprised the backers had they taken the time to look into the past history of the campaigner. His past business ventures all share a crash and burn history. He founded an employment agency in Houston in the 80s when there was an oil and gas bust going on. He invented a game called Trivial Compute that didn't last long. He attempted to outdo AT&T in directory assistance in Philadelphia, who was unable to raise money for the venture, a pet hotline that charged people that found lost animals that failed. Finders were not reimbursed by the owners. Not the kind of track record to inspire confidence. On Indiegogo in 2016, Monahan also launched Mojo, which apparently had none since it only gathered 33 backers. But since it was a flexible goal, the campaign did get the $3,644 raised, which they may have shifted over to the iBackpack campaign based on an update in September 2016. There's no indication that any Mojo backer received a refund of their pledge if they requested it. 2016 also saw the PAL magnetic cable system from Monahan, another of Indiegogo's flexible goal setups that allowed a campaigner to get whatever has been raised even if the campaign goal is not reached. The 155 backers who ponied up $7,982 for their cables have never gotten them if the comments section is representative. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Boston. I am the Director of Innovation for iBackpack, and I'm also a front-end developer at a large tech company down in Austin, Texas. 
When we were first thinking about how to raise money, we considered bank loans, we considered venture capital, we really considered all options, but Kickstarter makes the most sense. We believe that the Kickstarter community is ideal for our iBackpack product. The iBackpack is perfect for many things. It's perfect for traveling the world, it's perfect for going camping, it's also perfect for taking to college. When I was in college, Vienna College, I wish that I had the iBackpack because you have internet wherever you go. But what really differentiates the iBackpack from backpacks being sold today? Well, I can tell you that, you know, being in the tech industry, current backpacks being sold aren't designed with technology in mind. But the iBackpack 2.0 is. You know, they have pockets for your MacBook, for your big work laptops, for your iPhones and your tablets and everything like that. The largest battery that comes with the bag. This has the uh, two USB port charging right here. This one also has the LED light, which is really convenient. So if you click the button on the side twice, it'll show you the light. This one has a really large LED light. So you can see the size of this light is massive. Um, so this would be good for reading a book on an airplane or for um, camping, things like that. And also it has three different light settings. Here is the lipstick charger. Um, so you can see it's quite small, easy to fit into a backpack or a purse. And it just has one USB port right here that you can plug a phone into really easily and it'll charge it very quickly. Here is what this component looks like out of its case. You can see how thin this thing is. It is about the size of a pencil. It's thinner than the iPhone. We also have two Bluetooth speakers. These are what they look like. So this is the orange one. So all the components can be charged with the wall plug that you get with them. So this is what the iBackpack wall plug looks like. And the cord you use to charge it is this one right here. And you can see we've got the iBackpack logo on it. And what's really neat about this is that it has a screen on it. We've even added in a new fan that you can plug into your Android or iPhone device to cool you off when it's hot. The summers in Austin get pretty hot, so we thought this would be a useful feature. This is the iBackpack car charger. Now, this again plugs back into your car, and it not only does it have a USB port for you to plug your own external cord into, but it does have the retractable. in order to provide the resources that we need in order to go out and build something that is revolutionary. As you have seen, a great promotional video can be made to influence a potential backer using only stock footage interspersed with some live action of a pretty girl. But what about Doug Monahan himself? The man that was supposed to be behind this campaign, and indeed, all of the campaigns that we're talking about here, appears to no longer want to be talking to anyone. And as KXAN, an Austin TV station, discovered, definitely does not want to give on-camera interviews to the media. What you see here is the only on-screen we have of him, and that's a promotional video excerpt. What is really known about this man? 
That's going to depend on what source you go to and what they have available on him. According to some sources, he is an entrepreneur and someone who is well-versed in the tech field, having worked for some of the major players for a number of years. According to his jilted backers, he is a man who has absconded with the crowdfunded money entrusted to him and never delivered a product. His LinkedIn profile says that he is the chief executive officer and founder of Daybreak Design since 2004 to the present, which would also cover the time when the iBackpack and the two other campaigns were created under his name. There's even a link there to an article that he wrote on that platform concerning the iBackpack. Curiously, though, there was no mention of his connection to iBackpack or the other crowdfunded campaigns on his LinkedIn profile now beyond that article. However, you'll find that if you shorten the name of the company to simply Daybreak, a different description of a firm over the same timeline emerges. Daybreak, it seems, provides outsourced sales and marketing services with a database of roughly 35 million key decision makers from corporate, education, and government accounts, according to their description. Monahan claims, quote, I invested over $10 million of my own personal money towards build the most comprehensive B2B contact list in the world, end quote. This is an interesting point. According to a 1998 Inc. article, Monahan was claiming a net worth of nearly $50 million and growing. That article was less than glowing, even though Monahan was touted as a success at the time, his firm then named Sunset Direct. If he has had so much money coming in over the years, why does he need to crowdfund anything? Shouldn't he have all the capital needed to make iBackpack and the expertise to market it successfully? Perhaps a clue may be found in 2017 in an article on an obscure site out of Djibouti. In it, the author alleges that the Fuse editorial department were anonymously contacted and an offer was made to sell Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaign backers information. From the article, quote, After that, further information providers said that from the CEO Doug Monahan himself, personal information for 40,000 people was sent unilaterally as a sample. It contained information on supporters who seemed to have obtained from multiple crowdfunding projects. Please understand that we have no way of verifying this information. It is presented here as an item of interest only. You have to draw your own conclusions. Meanwhile, the backers of iBackpack, Mojo, and Pow all wait for their product. Many have given up, knowing all too well they wandered, unknowing, into crowdfunding hell.